wanted to invite someone for the Friday night. I do have some little uh, pamphlets. Second Timothy chapter one. Second Timothy chapter one tonight. like I hit on this verse about every week, but uh, I'm, I'm doing a, a series of verses that have helped me, and uh, this, is, this is one. When I was a young man, um, in high school, I got interested in singing. We had a choir in our high school, and I enjoyed that, and then I got into a smaller group, and uh, I used to get really nervous. It was Christian school, and we sang at churches and different things, and one of the other young men uh, named Dwayne. He, he was same, my same age. He was already preaching and doing all kinds of things. And uh, he shared this verse with me, and it really helped me. Uh, the verse says, 2 Timothy 1, verse 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And uh, really, that verse applies to exactly what I was doing. I was ministering. I was you know, serving the Lord. And uh, yet I was, physically, I was afraid. And it didn't necessarily make my fear go away, but uh, I can't say that it didn't necessarily make me quit shaking. But uh, uh, I knew that I could trust the Lord to to get through. Let, let me read, starting in verse one. We'll read down to verse seven. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The first few verses he has by way of, of, of introduction. And uh, he talks to him about his concern and love for, for Timothy there in verses 3 and 4. And how he wants to see him and so on. And he also talks to him about his heritage of faith. Now, not all of us are going to have a godly mother and grandmother, but we can, we can still have faith, whether we have a heritage of faith or not. And I've always encouraged people, if you don't have a heritage of faith, start one. You be the grandmother. You be the mother that somebody looks back to and says, thank God that uh, my mother, my grandmother, you know, trusted the Lord and, and uh, passed that down to, to us by her example. Uh, remember faith, he's, he's saying to to Timothy there. But then he also says to him, uh, remember the gift. God's given you a gift. And he talks about the, the laying on of hands and so on. But uh, verse 6, that thou stir up the gift of God. And uh, the wherefore there in verse 6, uh, because of your faith, because of this gift, he's saying, stir it up. <laughs> now, if you've never worked with a fire, then you would, this wouldn't mean anything to you. But if you've ever had a, a fire going in the fireplace and it, it dies down and it's just coals, well, you, you've got to stir it up. You know, you've got to get things moving around and get some more sticks on there and so on, get it going again. Uh, that's what he's talking about. God's given you a gift. He says, now, don't let it just go to waste. Don't let it just lay there. Uh, stir it up. Uh, the Bible teaches that every Christian has a spiritual gift. Now, some people believe that Christians only have one. I don't know that it's real important how many, but uh, we have at least one. And in, uh, in, in 1 Corinthians, he, he says, All these worketh one and the self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. The words I wanted you to hear there was every man, every person. He's talking there about spiritual gifts. The word severally means individually. God gives individual gifts to every Christian. That was 1 Corinthians 12, 11. The word gift is the word charisma. It means unmerited favor. You don't earn it. You don't deserve it. God just decides, oh, okay, this one for you. This one for you. And uh, he, I mentioned, I think, last week, uh, there's lists in Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12. 
uh, as to the, many of the different ones. But he's saying, stir it up. And there's some things in, in the scripture that, that help us see some things we can do. Uh, one, in 1 Timothy 4 and verse 14, we can stop neglecting it. <laughs> neglect not the gift. 1 Timothy 4, 14. Neglect not the gift that is in thee. You know, sometimes they need to be stirred up because we just haven't been using it. It's kind of like me and my guitar. You know, I've got a guitar. And uh, I could play it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I found this. To, act, to play it, you have to actually open the case. <laughs> you, know, you have to get it out. You have to stir it up. You have to do something. Well, it's the same with spiritual things. You know, God's given you a gift. Don't neglect it. Get it out. Open it. Use it. Uh, another thing we can do in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6, he says, I put thee in remembrance. Um, we can be reminded. That there's a lot of different ways we can be reminded about using our gift. Sometimes other people will say, hey, listen, brother, your sister, you need to be, we need you. You know, they can, they can kind of, poke you and, and, and get you going. One of the things that should remind us is just reading God's word. You know, as we're reading God's word, it should remind us, hey, we need to be serving the Lord. Uh, in 2 Peter 3, 1, he says, I write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. So there's those same phrases. That I'm, I'm stirring you up. Remember. Um, be mindful of what, what God wants you to do. Uh, 2 Peter 1, 13 I think it made as long as I'm in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Yeah, we need to be reminding each other. Uh, we need to be reading God's word. We need to be listening to your pastor. You know, both Paul and Peter are telling people now, I'm trying to stir you up. I'm trying to remind you. And, uh, you know, when, uh, when someone is uh, pushing you that way, then don't, don't resist it. Uh, stir up the gift that's in you. In Hebrews, he uses the word uh, provoke. Hebrews 10 and verse 24, read that one. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. And that's, that's a good kind of provoke. Uh, we need to uh, be provoked to use our gifts. Now, sometimes we'll be provoked just because we'll see a need. You've probably had that happen where you see something and the Lord just touches your heart and you think, man, I, I can meet that need. And God stirs you up. Uh, but sometimes it's... You see it because your, your church, uh, you know, something happens at, at church and, and someone stirs you up. Sometimes it could be another church. You might hear of another church or, you know, you visit another church and you, you see, oh, man, they're, they're doing things we're not doing. We could do that. <laughs> uh, there's a verse in uh, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 2, where he says, he's talking about, as I boast of you to them of Macedonia and Achaia, and your zeal hath provoked very many. He's been telling people, oh, this is what, what they're doing. Oh, we could do that. <laughs> now, we need to be stirred up. And God, God can stir us up. There, there's a verse in uh, Deuteronomy 32 where he uses the illustration of an eagle. I've never been around eagles much, but uh, I'm told that sometimes the little eaglets don't want to leave the nest, and so the mother stirs them up. The, the verse is Deuteronomy 32, verse 11. Sorry, I don't know if I said that. He says, as an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttering over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. And the picture there is, is exactly what the mother eagle does. You know, they're ready to fly, but they don't know they're ready to fly. And so she pushes them out of the nest. But she doesn't just push them out of the nest. She gets underneath them as well and helps them, make sure that, make sure that they're all right. You know, God does that to us. God sometimes just puts it in our heart. or Sometimes he just puts the situation where, you know, we've got to, we've got to sink or swim, and yet we, we don't sink because the Lord is underneath us. Um, Doyle and I were um, ministering in a church in, in California when I was first in the ministry and uh, I, I was the music director it was a big church and we had plenty to do 
I, was also, I, was, I also taught the uh, college class. I worked with the senior citizens. I did the printing and uh, anything else that nobody else wanted to do. Uh, and all the music, and that, that was a lot. But the Lord just stirred me up, and, and I felt like I wanted to do more. I, I asked my, I've told you this before, but I asked my pastor if he thought I could be a preacher. I thought he'd say no, and you know, I'd just go on my merry way, but uh, he said, yeah, I think you could do it. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the Lord just stirred me up. And, uh, you know, we, well, we ended up here. Uh, stir up the gift that's in you. It's, uh, there's so much to be done. Stir up the gift. Now, Satan will try to discourage you. He'll say, ah, oh, you can't do it. Uh, you're no good. Don't believe that. Believe the Lord. It, it's faith. It's a faith thing, not a pride thing. Uh, God is not saying, you've got to be the best in the world at this. He's just saying, I've got a job for you. Uh, stir up the gift of, of God. Now, that's what brings us to the verse that, that I'm emphasizing tonight. See, the reason that 2 Timothy 1.7 is there is because these are people who are actually doing something. And that's when it gets scary. It's easy to look at a bicycle, but then you get on it. <laughs> and it gets scary if you don't know how to ride a bike. Um, not only stir up the gifts, stay unafraid. That's what he's saying there in verse 7. God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Some people won't even start because they're fearful. Others, they start and then they quit. Uh, stay unafraid. Using your spiritual gift will be scary. Now, this is not the word that, where we get the word phobia, the word fear there, phobos. Uh, this is not a, he, he's, um, God hath not given us the, the spirit uh, of, of fear. He, he's not talking here about, well, let's see. There's a good fear. If, if you see some lions coming at you, you run and you hide, okay? It's all right. You don't have to say, praise the Lord, uh, victory in Jesus. Um, sometimes in the Acts, you'll see the disciples. They, you know, they flee. They leave the city. Um, there's also a godly fear. Um, you know, there's, there's fears that God, God says are, are part of our life. But what he's talking about here is, uh, is cowardice. This doesn't come from God. He says, God hath not given us the spirit of fear. Um, that's when we give in to our feelings rather than, than living by faith. Sometimes I think it's not even so much that as, as it is laziness, but um, we need to be careful that we're not living by fear. God has told us at least some of his provision here in this verse. God's given us the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And that word power, I mean, you know this, it's the word dunamis, where we get the word dynamite. Uh, it's like what it said about Jesus in Matthew eleven twenty. 20. It talks about his mighty works. That's the kind of power we're talking about. Uh, God's, God provides the power. God also provides the love. God is love. Our, our love comes from him. It, it's the word agape. You know, you're familiar with that. that. That's really our motivation, isn't it? You know, our love for God. Our love for the lost. Our love for Christians. And then he says as well, a sound mind. God gives us a sound mind, self-control, discipline. Uh, we're not slaves to our emotions. And uh, God can help us to do the things that he calls us to do. It made me think of the book of Joshua. You know, several times God says to Joshua, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Um, in Joshua 1, verse 7, Joshua 1, verse 9, Verse 9 is great. I have not I commanded thee, be strong and have a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. But I notice between verse 7 and verse 9, strangely enough, is verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. See, he's not just saying, he's not just charging them up and, you know, getting them to have an emotional response here. He's saying, you listen to what I've got to say. You believe my word. Uh, it'll bless you. Um, defeat is not the Christian norm, folks. Uh, 
Christ has already won the victory, and he has uh, good things for us. Uh, stir up the gifts, stay unafraid, and then thirdly, stand with the Lord. Uh, look back there at 2 Timothy uh, 1 again in verse 8. Just after he makes that statement in verse 7, he says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death, and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. So he's saying, uh, just, just stand with the Lord. Don't be ashamed of the Lord. Don't be ashamed of his servants. Uh, you know, the Lord's not ashamed of us. We, we can see that from Scripture. Uh, we don't need to be ashamed of him. We don't need to be ashamed of those who really take a stand for the Lord. Uh, you know, there's people who, who uh, the world would mock. We, we were with a, a family in uh, London at w one time, and he had, he had been a minister, I think it was to Iran. When that closed, he went to uh, London to minister to Muslims there. And uh, as we were with him, he began to preach. And, you know, it's kind of startling, you know. Blah, 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 he's, he's letting her rip, you know. And, and the, the tendency was kind of, Oh, I wonder who that guy is. <laughs> but we don't want to be ashamed of someone who's willing to stand for the Lord. Now, sometimes people, you know, Christians can do the wrong thing. But listen, that wasn't the wrong thing. And uh, we need to be careful that we're not uh, separating ourselves. You know, stand with the Lord and stand with his, his people. In 1 Peter 4, verse 16, he says, If any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Let him glorify God. And then again in verse 19, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Uh, we don't need to be ashamed. We need to stand with the Lord. And the, the phrase he uses there in the second half of verse 8 is, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. He says, don't be ashamed. Be a partaker. Participate in this thing, the afflictions of the gospel, according to the power of God. You know, there's some really encouraging verses that God has given to us, things that, that Jesus said and so on. Uh, in John 16, Jesus said, These things I've spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Uh, so we can, we can stand with the Lord. Uh, we can... Uh, no matter what is happening around us, uh, we don't have to be afraid. Uh, God has things in control. And what a great example Paul was of this. In um, 2 Timothy 4 and, and verse 17, he's talking about how uh, different ones have walked away. He says, notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. You know, even when there wasn't anybody else helping him. Now, oftentimes there were, and he, he talks about those different ones. But he didn't have to be afraid. No matter what human resources he had, he said, the Lord stood with me. And it, as it's often been said, you and God make a majority. That's okay. There was a man in the, the 1500s named Hugh Latimer. And uh, just before he was burned to death for Christ, he wrote this. Die once we must, how and where we know not, but here is not our home. Let us therefore accordingly consider things, having always before our eyes that heavenly Jerusalem and the way, and the way there in persecution. And let us consider all the dear friends of God, how they've gone after the example of our Savior, Jesus Christ, whose footsteps let us also follow, even to the gallows, if God's will be so. He didn't have to be afraid. In um, 1 Peter uh, chapter 2 and, and verse 21, the, the Bible tells us that Jesus is our great example. Even hereunto were, we call, were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, 
leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Uh, so uh, here's a verse I, I've found helpful, and, and I think uh, many others have as well. Uh, there, there's um, a lot of times in life when uh, fear comes knocking. And, and I, I didn't bring this message for this particular reason, but there's a lot of people who are afraid right now. You know, they're afraid to go out. They're afraid of all kinds of things. Uh, well, the Bible says, God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Can you say that with me? God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. All right. Any comments or questions before we take some uh, prayer requests tonight?